Hey everyone, I'd like to take a few moments to discuss how to get a strong encryption configuration set up for free using uh, publicly trusted certificates from letsencrypt.org. And preferably, you know, we'll see how it turns out, but hopefully this will get a good score on SSL Labs, which kind of gives you a report card on the state of the cryptography uh, and uh, configurations that you're using. So our current situation is this. I've spun up a brand new Apache server. It's unencrypted. It's at demo.tachyon.cx, just some random domain that I have. And we're logged into it. And one more thing I want to show you is that I've started this command in the background because it takes forever. And we will, we will uh, circle back to that. But the actual command is OpenSSL dhparam. And I think I may, may even have it here. Yeah, let me just copy this in really quickly. So open SSL dhparam dash out dhparam.pem 4096. So this command, if you go to cd, let's see, slash etsy slash SSL slash certs and run this command right here, it's going to create these Diffie-Hellman parameters that are more secure than the defaults that come with your your Linux distribution, most likely. So that is a way to improve the security of your SSL configuration, but you wanna start that early because it takes a very long time to generate uh, a the output here. So start that first. Again, it's open SSL dhparam dash out, the name of the file, whatever you wanna call it. And I used 4096 here. So it's at the 4096 bits. So that's right in the background, but let's begin actually configuring Apache here to use uh, encryption and use it in a very secure way. So the first thing you want to do with your uh, with your configuration of SSL TLS isn't so much on the server itself, but it's with whoever your DNS provider is. So here we're on DigitalOcean right now. I'm going to actually make a CAA record. And this just defines which certificate authorities are allowed to issue certificates for my domain. So the certificate authority that we're going to be using is letsencrypt.org, and they are allowed to issue certificates. So by defining this, it makes sure that no other certificate authority can issue certificates, you know, in the case that maybe one gets compromised and someone's issuing certificates on behalf of my domain, they can't really do that because uh, the CAA record says that only letsencrypt.org is allowed to issue certificates. So you do that CAA record uh, through your particular DNS provider or cloud provider. And now we can actually begin setting up encryption on our Apache server in this case. So I'm going to CD into Etsy, uh, let's see, Apache to, I believe we have sites enabled here. And let's see what we have. Yeah, 000, zero, zero default. So I'm not gonna make any major changes to the, the configuration. Luckily, when you use Let's Encrypt, they've got tools that do most of that for you. But one thing I'm gonna do is open this up, the default configuration file. And yeah, we're listening here, server admin. Let's see, I'm gonna change the server name because that might be helpful when we use certbot, which is, what, which is commonly used with Let's Encrypt. So our server name in this case is demo.tachyon.cx. Document roots, fine, that's all fine. Okay, so we'll return to this configuration a little bit later, but I just wanted to update the server name there. Okay, so what you first have to do here when you want to set up encryption is you have to install the appropriate utilities. The easiest way to get up and running with a Let's Encrypt certificate on Ubuntu or most other operating systems is to use this utility called CertBot. So I'm gonna demonstrate the installation, but just know that it might take longer for you because I've actually already done the installation in the background just so you don't have to watch it. But you would want to, if this is, if you haven't installed it and you're installing it currently, you'd run an app git update. Uh, you would then want to install this package called install software-properties-common. And again, this is already all installed for me, so it's gonna be much faster for me than it might be for you. So you install software, it's called software properties common. And after you've installed that, then you want to add the appropriate repositories so that you can actually install this certbot application. So you do apt-git 
apt add, oops, excuse me, apt dash add repository. First you add this repository called universe, and we've already got that. And then after adding universe, you have to add PPA colon certbot slash certbot. And that should also say, well, that's already installed. Yeah. I guess it will add it anyway. <laughs> All right, so that's reinstalled, I suppose. And then we run an app get update again to make sure that we've got a current view of all the packages in these new repositories that we've added. So once again, app get update. And then finally, we want to install certbot as well as its, its Apache specific module. So we install certbot and then we install Python 3 dash certbot dash Apache, I think and they're both already installed. Okay, great. So with everything installed, then you can actually run the command to generate the, not just the, the certificates, but also the, it will, if you allow it to, it will make the modifications necessary in your Apache configuration. So we are going to run here and cross our fingers. I'm gonna try a few command line flags and hopefully they'll all work. So the, the first part is just certbot and specifically we are going to use the Apache module. I think we can specify our domain here. So I'm gonna to try to just specify it here uh, directly on the command line. And you can do things like agree to the terms of service. So dash dash agree TOS is going to basically reduce the amount of interactive like input that you have to provide. Uh, redirect. So we want, uh, we want CertBot to reconfigure Apache to redirect unencrypted connections over HTTP to encrypted connections over HTTPS. So that's redirect. And we want it to upgrade insecure connections. So that's UIR. Uh, we also want to use OCSP stapling, which is uh, something that improves that we won't go into it, but it, it can improve the security of uh, your particular SSL implementation or certificates. And we also want to use dash dash HSTS. So this is gonna set again in the configuration file. It's gonna tell uh, the server to send a particular header, uh, the strict transport security header. And in doing so, again, we aren't gonna go into the details, but it will improve the security, or at least that's the idea. And then finally, the last argument we are going to pass is we want to not use the default key size, which I think is 4096 for RSA keys with Let's Encrypt. I wanna use 4096. And did I say 4096 earlier? Anyway, the default's 2048. The key, the key size that I wanna use is 4096. So let's see if that worked. Okay, so we have to enter uh, an email address. And I'll just say, mm. Yeah, we'll just use that. And now it's actually going to perform this. It's going to perform a like a challenge, uh, challenge res response type exchange that verifies that this server has the DNS name that I'm attempting to get the certificate for. So yeah, we will share that. It's going to try to obtain the new certificates, performs the challenges, enables the appropriate modules, and it looks like it's done the verification. It's changed the, yeah, it's changed the, the configurations and so forth. And our new configuration is located here at 000-default-le-ssl. So let's see what that actually looks like. If we go to V, uh, if we open V or use V to open a particular configuration file, which is under sites enabled, 000 default dash le ssl although i wonder what's under default right now is that just is it going to re yeah it's going to rewrite okay so under default it, it configured it to basically rewrite any requests and direct them to the the actual encrypted uh sort of url so anyway default dash le ssl.conf and yeah we've got our ssl stapling cache configured up here uh, let's see, 
the appropriate server name, the SSL certificate file, the SSL certificate key file, SSL use stapling. We've got our content security policy. We've got our strict transport security policy. So everything's looking pretty good, right? So it's done a lot of the configuration for us. And then if we go into this other configuration file, uh, which is under let's encrypt options dash SSL dash Apache. We've just got a little bit more in the way of, uh, of configurations that were made here. So we're actually going to change some of the configurations. So for instance, I'm going to harden the SSL protocol configuration. Right now it just says don't use SSL version two and SSL version three. But actually what I wanna do is, well, let me not make that change. I'm gonna override that. Come on, let me out. What I'm gonna do is also subtract uh, TLS version one and version 1.1. So hopefully, let me just keep this in order here. I think that I've got the, the right syntax. I think it's just one. And then I think it's TLS v 1.1. So I'm gonna try that uh, that configuration. We'll see if it, if it loads here. So I'm gonna right quit there. And now we can quickly try to reload the Apache service. And it looks like it reloaded. So it looks like it's running. So I guess I didn't mess up the syntax too poorly or too much. And let's go back into our SSL options here. And I'm not gonna change any of the Cypher Suite stuff because that's really involved. But one thing I do want to change uh, once the opportunity presents itself is I want to uh, use this DH param that we that I pointed out way at the beginning. So over here in Etsy SSL certs, if I do an LS of DH param, oh, well, it's gonna be DH param 4096.pem. And I actually want to use that with SSL because I want it to be more secure than the Diffie-Hellman parameter that just comes out of the box. So on Apache, it would be, if I remember, well, actually, no, I'm just gonna check my notes here just to make sure. SSL open SSL conf command. Well, that's what I wrote down. So let's see what we can do here. Uh, parameters, DH parameters. And then we want to actually pass it the, the path to that Diffie-Hellman uh, parameter file that we made. So it'd be etc SSL certs, uh, DH param 4096.pem. And I think that is correct. So let's do this again. We're just gonna do a, a diagnostic reload of the service to see if it crashes or not. And it did, so what's our issue here? Yeah, DH param, oh, okay. Well, you have to spell things correctly, typically. So if I go back into this, let's see if that fixes it. So once again, having respelled that properly, let's see if that works. And it looks like it does. It looks like uh, it's now running, right? So we still have that failure in the history, but it's running now. So what else do we wanna do? I think that's about, that's about it. Uh, it's kinda nice, with SERPBOT, it really does most of the work for you. So if we go over to our, our, our uh, dem demo here, our domain, and press enter, I want you to notice not much changed, except now we've got this lock. And even though we didn't specify HTTPS, it's still encrypted, right? Because we have very strictly said that everything has to be redirected over an encrypted connection. So if we look at the certificate, we got this from Let's Encrypt for demo.tachyon.cx. I'm sorry if it's a little small. And even if we go to, well, we could look at the path or we could look at details. And we're using SHA-256. Our actual public key is 4,096 bits. So you can kind of look at the details and it's all very cool. But long story short, we have now not just added the ability to use HTTPS, but also we've made it a requirement. So the, the test, the real test, is if we go to open, if we go to SSL labs, and we try to test the server out. Let's see where we can make improvements. So it will go through and it's going to test a variety of different, different 
uh, settings or configurations and make sure that there are no sort of vulnerabilities or, or vulnerable, vulnerable algorithms available to use. And then ultimately it will kind of print out this report card and you can get an F all the way up to an A plus. And I'm assuming that we aren't going to get an A plus, but uh, we'll take a look, we'll see. Uh, the nice thing is it will additionally, it will tell you where you can make improvements. So it doesn't just give you the grade and you don't know how to improve it further. It will usually give you kind of a highlighted uh, sort of entry in this output down here that's maybe in yellow or orange or something that tells you exactly how you can improve your your crypto situation. So we just kind of have to wait for it to run a few more tests. And once that's done, we'll get our, our report card back. So if I went through it very quickly, I did take notes by the way, and I will have these all posted on the GitHub repository, our Stormwind GitHub repository, kind of nicely formatted with Markdown. And you know, it looks a lot better than this, this uh, text document here. And if you want to take a look at that or refer to that while you're maybe setting Apache up with Let's Encrypt and getting uh, encryption up and running, it would be at github.com slash Stormwind Studios. And specifically, it would be under uh, OpenSSL notes. So this is still kind of somewhat related to OpenSSL, so I'm gonna keep it under these notes here. So again, if we went through those commands really quickly, and I know we did, you can always refer back to those to get an idea of uh, what steps you might want to take. So we got an A+, which is great. So we support TLS 1.3. We've got tra uh, strict transport security enabled. Uh, our DNS cert certification authority authorization, that CAA record that we set over in our, our cloud provider console, uh, that's that was found. So that improves our security. Our key is nice and big. Uh, lots of green here. This makes me very happy. And it does give us an A+. It looks like it's widely compatible but with no major security vulnerabilities. So that's, I guess, an example of how you can get an A plus from SSL Labs, which is something that I, I always spend maybe a little bit too much time getting. I, I can get an A pretty easily, but the A plus sometimes not as easily. And I will totally waste a few hours to get that plus. But anyway, hopefully that's useful for you. It's nice. Uh, Let's Encrypt is great because it does allow you to encrypt whatever web page you want for free and get the security benefits without having to pay a, a license, you know, or a, I guess I should say a subscription fee uh, to some certi certification authority. So that's it. That's it for this. And again, hopefully that was helpful for you. Do check out the GitHub page if you uh, would like a slightly less fast paced uh, look at the commands that you need to run. Thanks again.